you can put your like your super custom cars under and you keep your daily drivers up on the top. Right, the, the ones on top are so ordinary. I collect cars. I have a small car collection. I'm not Jay Leno. One guy was selling me cars. He says, you have everything you need. You have some shoes, you have pants, you have your rent paid. Now life is about what you want. No one needs a Ferrari. No one needs, no one even needs Gucci sneakers. Like, what do you want? I was like, wow. So now I've been fucking around buying shit I want. Hey, I'm Ice-T and I'm a hustler. You said it's an electric vehicle? Yes, yeah, electric vehicle. People usually are athletically inclined, academically inclined, or artistically inclined. And art is what drives me, creating new things. I got my posters of movies I'm in and movies I wish I was in. <laughs> I just enjoyed the satisfaction of putting something together and having it sometimes win, have it sometimes fail. Yeah, like Scarface and Reservoir Dogs and Heat. I used to do Heat in real life, but that's another story. Ice tea just means cool tea or iceberg tea. When I was more like leaning more toward the gang life, they called me Crazy Trey. Hold on, somebody to, trying to borrow money. That's why I don't pick it up. Because my real name is Tracy. And I, I didn't used to let people call me Tracy because that was a girl's name. It always start fights. Like, you know, in the hood, they say, Tracy, yo, that's a bitch name. So now you got the swing on the motherfucker on site. On Sunday, I, I, I get my checkbook out. I get my emotions up. And I sit and I deal with all my friends and all their issues. Catch up. On Sundays. But I've always been somebody who's wanted to play the game fair. You know, I've never been a double crosser. I've never ripped people off. I always wanted to be considered a good person. I have to make money all during the week, and then on Sunday, I give it out. That sounds like church. Kind of like church, right? Mm. Now, this is some coming from somebody who used to rob banks. As you come in here, you got gold records. I got six of them in a row. But this is when people had to actually physically go to the store and buy your record. It's a big commitment. It's not like iTunes just clicking it. And this thing might look like a bone to some people. This is called a cassette. This is a thing called a CD that recently became extinct. And this is a, a weird thing. It's like a piece of plastic. This thing turned around and it made sound. It's called a record. It's very interesting, okay? So we got a few of these. Like, this is one. See, I didn't get into the rap game till I was 27. I'm not the rapper at 16 talking about he had keys of dope. I had already lived a hustler's life. That was my ammunition for the words. I wasn't faking about the shit. I had done the shit. When I was out in the streets hustling and stealing, I, I made more in one weekend than I had made in my entire rap career. Now kids can aspire to be rappers. They can aspire to be top athletes. They can aspire to be all types of people that are successful. But when I was growing up, there were no rappers. It was the hustlers. When you're in the ghetto, that's who got the nice cars, that's who's got the women, and that's who you aspire to be. The best pimps keep a steel lid on their emotions, and I was one of the iciest. I used to memorize them and I could say, all right, let's see. She'll be rated the best in the East and the West when the boosting hand goes down. She'll steal knots out of knees and Fido's fleas. This bitch steal out many a town. <laughs> You're in the 11th grade, whatever it is. Saying shit like that. They say, say some more of that ice stuff, T. Shoot some more of that ice stuff, T. I was branded the beast. I sat down at the feast. It was just about the things I was seeing in my neighborhood. And then one day I had the epiphany. If I want to be remembered, I just can't live the game. I have to document the game to transfer the information I'm getting from the streets to the listeners that are willing. And I draw those kids in with that gun. And then hopefully when I, they listen to my music, they realize, yo, if I use this gun, man, this is what trouble I'm going to be in. Right. So it's a technique to grab that audience. And, uh, I think I got them, you know, and hopefully they learn. I'd like to thank you for giving us this opportunity to come down to your place and do this interview. Bring her down there. Bring her down. You know, she follows my lead, though. She likes cars, fortunately. Oh, guess what? The two of you have been married a while. So. 15 years. You know, 
They say love isn't looking somebody in the eyes, it's looking out in the same direction. So you got to find very similar people. I seen a guy who was a snake charmer and his wife was a snake charmer. They've been together fucking 50 years. So you got to find bitches like snakes. So what happens is when I do the, my little tours, I go upstairs first and then I take the elevator down. Uh, Ice needed an elevator. I like to use the stairs. It gives me like a little workout. But when you have a lot of groceries, it really helps. So this is the famous Coco Cave slash Bitch Cave slash everything about it. Ice buys cars, I buy shoes. <laughs> I started watching Sharon Osbourne on television. I was watching Ozzy and I'm like, it's a down ass broad. Like, would Ozzy have a house if it wasn't for Sharon Osbourne? <laughs> She loves shoes, too. Ozzy doesn't seem like somebody's gonna pay a cable bill. Somebody's gotta hold that together. But I need a chick like that. Okay, for little, baby. A little hip-hop All right, yes, you know, she totally gets hip-hop. She loves watching Dad on stage and bopping her head. Yes, you love that. Because me as an artist, I can go get truckloads of money, but crossing T's and dotting the I's really aren't artist things. So this was the infamous gangster rap cover. Ice is like, you know, let's take a picture of our real life. You know, this is our real bed. He, this is a real nightstands, his real gun. <laughs> and we just kind of took a picture of what life was like at that moment. And we were the first one that shot a cover like that. You know? Fair enough, that's gangsta. That's gangsta. All right, yeah. <laughs> He's saying anything original, anything you start, OG is gangsta. Fair enough. The trip right here. First of all, let's talk about the band and the sound. Nobody's talking about the music. This is um, new for you. Body Count's a rock group, uh, contrary to what The crazy thing about me is I'm still doing absolutely everything I was doing when I was 25. I'm a rapper, I'm a lead singer. I try to sing. And, it's, and, and the sound, no. I went to Crenshaw High School with, it's aggressive, and it's from a perspective from the ghetto. Bill, it's interesting for me, I'm one of the few people that has done everything I ever wanted to do in my life. I have to really create new shit. I think that's one of the reasons I'm still around. Well, let's get into it. Do you feel there are any good cops? There's a lot of good cops out there, you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of police officers. One of the most momentous there. things you did was a write and record a song called Cop Killer. This next record is dedicated to some personal friends of mine, the LAPD. How can you be a cop killer once upon a time and then play a cop? I played a cop in New Jack City. I don't have a problem with it. If you believe I kill cops, you also believe David Bowie's an astronaut. We play characters. I'm gonna shut up, I'm gonna blow your brains out. I go on Law and Order and Dick Wolf says to me, he goes, in your brain, what is the cop we need? Play the cop we need. Who wants a treat? NYPD. Hell you doing, bozo? See, this is the thing. Everything I do is fun. Acting is fun. Writing ideas is fun. Come on, Nanny. Let's get mama. Let's find mama. I have created a life that everything I do is fun, so why would you retire? You're gonna turn 60 in February of next year. Does that number mean anything to you? Like my tour bus, it used to smell like weed and alcohol, and now it smells like Ben Gay. Like, <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. People say, what's your biggest accomplishment? Getting out of the hood. It's a good shot of the George Washington Bridge. I just get up every day, and I put my feet on the ground, and I'm like, I got shit to do. Where's Coco?